to either please use the facility or call the Carver office. We will be having a breakout room session today and while you're in there you'll have the opportunity to raise your hand and a Carver member will join you to offer support if you need any, if you've got any questions or you need any support whilst in that breakout room. Um, and if you unexpectedly leave the call today, please can we ask you to rejoin as soon as possible using the original link that you were sent them um, that you've joined today with. And lastly, in terms of housekeeping, there will be an evaluation form today and we will give you time in the session to complete this. If you do have to leave the session early for any reason, please can you look out for our evaluation form in the follow up email. We really value your feedback and it will help us improve our service and tailor our future sessions. So George is now going to share a Padlet with you. So this is where we would like you to post any questions that you have um, throughout today's briefing. I think George has also shared the link in the chat. So thank you for doing that, Georgia. Um, because we've got a busy session today, we won't actually be stopping to take your questions as we go, but we will make sure that if you put any questions on the Padlet here, we will have the opportunity to answer them in our question and answer session at the end. And if there is anything that we are unable to answer today for you, we'll make sure that we go away, find out the answer and get back to you within the next 24 to 48 hours. Thank you, Georgia. Could you sh share the agenda for me? Thank you. So you can now see today's agenda on the screen. Um, we're going to start off with introductions and we're going to move on to looking back at 23, 2024. So some of the things that happened in that academic year. As I said, you'll also be having the opportunity to go into a breakout room where you will have the chance to talk to your colleagues about last academic year, how it's going, creating your assignment briefs and also what your aspirations and if you've got any anxieties for the academic year ahead, 2024-2025. For this, we're also going to share some useful resources with you, and we're going to signpost how you find them. We're also going to touch briefly on internal and external moderation, and we're going to end with um, what a life in the <clears throat> what a year in the life of working with Carver looks like, and we're also going to touch base on our different forms of communication that we use. And then this will be concluded with our question and answer session. So let's have a look um, at who the faces of Carver are. As you can see now, we're a team of six and we have our new um, CEO. So Emily Ross is our new CEO. Barbara Hughes is our quality manager. Jackie Kelly is the quality and operations officer. And we've already introduced the three of us. But for those of you that have joined late who might not know us, my name is Emma Watts. I'm one of the quality and development officers here at Carver. I have Nork Zakarian joining me, who is also a quality and development officer. And I have Georgia Green, who is our communications and events officer. So throughout this session, you'll hear from all three of us. Can we take a look back now um, at 2023-2024? So last year, we revalidated a number of different diplomas. So you can see the diplomas that we validated last year have been highlighted on the screen. So we revalidated hospitality and tourism, criminal justice and policing, health professions and health and social care, construction in the built environment, which now means that we have a total of 25 validated diplomas for this academic year as we move into 24-25. Also this academic year, we're going to be revalidating the access to HE diploma in science, in medicine and sports science. So we have sent framework review documents to all those providers who deliver these programmes and we've asked for your feedback. Please make sure that you complete them and send them to Carver no later than the 31st of October. Thank you. We also collected feedback from our providers um, at the end of last academic year and we um, discuss this feedback within Carver and we use it to help us uh, plan and move forward. So let's just take this opportunity to look at some of that feedback and thank you to anyone who did complete the feedback forms for us. So we're first going to look at Carver's communication about general information. You can see on the screen there that 68.2 percent rated us six out of six for this. 
This shows that we've been very proactive at sharing information and keeping tutors up to date with any changes or important information that we thought they needed to know. Next, we have Carver's communication around events. Again, a good score here, so 77.3% scored a six out of six. This shows our organization and effectiveness around our events, which has resulted in high attendance across the nine different events that we ran last year. And finally, this is the one that Carver is most proud of. So 100% of people who completed the survey scored a six out of six for being helpful and supportive. So thank you very much. We'll just give you a minute to look at um, some of the feedback that the tutors provided. So we've collated um, all the responses that we received and we've shared a few of those responses on the screen now for you. Georgia, could you go to the next slide for me, please? Thank you. So we're going to um, have a look at some Carver statistics now. So this year, we were really pleased to issue 1,792 certificates. Whilst we appreciate this is less than last year, we do appreciate that the overall sign-ups for access to HE diplomas have been down across the board. Um, and this is due to a series of external factors which have had an impact. The QAA tolerance for achievement this year remained at 78.4%, give or plus or minus 10%. And as you can see, Carver's achievement rate of 74% remains in tolerance overall. So that was really good as well. Carver will continue to support providers to meet their achievement rates. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to highlight the Recruitment and Retention Handbook, which is a fantastic resource which highlights good practice. Nork will be touching on more about the Recruitment and Retention Handbook later in this briefing. We're also really pleased that we've had a much smaller student withdrawal rate this year. So this year we only had uh, student, withdraw student withdrawals of 445 compared to 740 last year, which is fantastic. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our providers for all the support that you've put in place to help contribute to this figure. We're now gonna be moving into a breakout room. And during this breakout room, you're going to have the chance to meet other providers. And we'd like you to take this opportunity to discuss the following three key areas. So how did things go last year for you? What are your aspirations and anxieties for 24, 25, if you have any anxieties? And how are you preparing your assignment? And how has preparing your assignment briefs gone? Georgia is going to put a link to this document in the chat now. So if I could please ask you all to click the link before you go to your breakout room. And then very shortly, you should see the opportunity to join a breakout room. Um, I think we've got 10 minutes for this activity, Georgia. Yeah. OK, I'm actually going to make it 11 because then that makes the maths nice and easy. So if we could please ask you to come back at 2.25, please. If you've got any questions, don't forget, please raise your hand in the breakout room and call for Carver support. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Do we have everyone back in the room? I think we're starting to get everyone back. Yeah. We're here. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we hope you had a fruitful discussion in, the, in your groups and that you found the discussion useful. Uh, if you have any questions that came out of your discussions and uh, you'd like to have a wider discussion about it uh, later, uh, please feel free to add them in the chat, um, actually add them in the Padlet. Um, but Georgia will be sharing the link to the Padlet in the chat right now. Um, so quickly reintroducing myself, I'm Nork, uh, Quality Development Officer here, along with um, Emma. And everyone here at Kava is here to help. Uh, you're familiar with our provider site, your, our diploma site. Both are um, personal to the colleges and they're specific to the access to HE subject. And they contain a range of useful information. And that's also a place you can go to for help. Georgia will now show us some of the key features um, and afterwards, we'll have um, we'll share a video with you 
so you can see what is included on the sites and how to use and how to navigate. So each provider, as I said, each college has its own provider site. You can see at the very top of the provider site that there are three tabs. Um, the home tab, the Kava documentation and the Kava support. So the home homepage provides a link to our annual planner with key dates and deadlines for the academic year. It's, it also contains links to the current and previous year DQRs, uh, a DQR or the diploma quality review is a document that contains links to all student statistics, outcomes, uh, validation reports, award board minutes, um, external moderation reports. So it has a, a, a lot of useful information that um, is useful to know from previous years and for the current year as well um, about the provision of access to HE courses at the college. So. There are links to the different diplomas as well that you run, uh, where you can find information on the rules of combinations for that diploma, um, your unit choice selections, external moderation and validation reports. So details of the different teams associated with those diplomas as well, you can find in, in uh, the first homepage of your uh, provider site. You will find names of um, in internal moderators, external moderator teams, and your cover representative that's there to help you if you have any questions. Um, now let's look at the second tab, the Kava documentation tab. This is everything related to Kava, Kava documentation and guidance. You can see a range of different colored books. But if there's one book that I would um, recommend that you go to as your go-to main book, it would be your it will be the yellow book. And this contains information on all quality assurance uh, processes um, and procedures, and it will let you, it will be your first point of call for reference. If we scroll down a bit, you can see links to the different forms and further guidance that we have uh, to make your life easier. There are there is a link to the data the database user guide, internal moderation forms assignment brief templates, um, information from the QAA and Kava's retention and recruitment handbook. Uh, earlier, Emma touched on this, but I will talk to you a bit more about what um, the retention and recruitment handbook is and how you could use it. So um, as we briefly, briefly discussed at the very beginning of this session, to whoever was here, uh, we've noticed, um, and some of the colleges have all, uh, as well noticed, some decline in numbers and recruitment across access to HE over the past few years. And we've identified um, some reasons for this, um, mainly um, to do, mainly we found that these are to do with the cost of living crisis, um, financial um, difficulties, mental health issues as well. Um, and we've worked closely with a range of Kava members to produce case studies showcasing what they've done to mitigate mitigate such impact uh, as much as poss we possibly can. And from this, we've launched the Retention and Recruitment Handbook, which is really as useful tool for everyone, um, for all the colleges. And we will continue to update it and share it with our members. So if you experience any difficulties around these topics, um, please have a look at it um, and you might find uh, useful, good practice and guidance that could potentially turn things around for your college. The third tab we have is um, is a place where, you, where you'll find all the sources of support av available to you throughout the academic year. So you can find a link to the database, the registration for Kava's monthly newsletter, and a link to the annual planner where you have key dates and deadlines. And at the very bottom, you'll find all our um, names and our contact details. And you can get in touch with us at any point. And as I said earlier, we're happy to help with any issues or concerns or questions you have. So. The next thing we're going to look at now, so we've had a look at the provider site, so that was the college main site. Now we're looking at a more zooming in on a 
uh, diplomas. So this is the diploma site. So with the one we have here is an example is the science one, the access to HE diploma in science. So what you have here is also um, really useful information on the diploma specifically. Um, you'll find uh, the course information, labor market data on um, in this uh, domain, uh, testimonials from uh, students. You'll have uh, how you'll have guidance on sustainability as well. Um, so all kinds of useful information uh, related to the course. And I want to show you now something at, that we've added at the um, in, within the diploma site. Uh, and these are two. Uh, tabs that you might have seen at the very top uh, while we were just on the site. Yes, thank you, uh, Georgia, for showing us the diploma site again. So those two very uh, tabs on the right-hand corner at the top, the assignment library and the teaching and le learning resources, those were added this year. And these are, this is a brand new thing that we're introducing and we're launching this year. And this was, uh, and this came as a, um, from feedback that we had from our providers and this is one our way of um doing things that were asked from us and uh, we hope it will be useful because i think it's something that everyone could use and contribute to um, and it could make our lives and your lives so much easier having a library where you can always refer to to find um things related to assignments. So if we go to the assignment library, for example, that's where you'll find um, a collection of both current and relevant past assignment briefs. You're more than happy, you're more than welcome to um, download these and use them as long as the, as they're um, um, relevant to, to the unit that you're teaching. Um, but you can also use it as guidance to create your own assignment brief because these are updated with the revised QAA um, grading scheme. So they have the new uh, grading standards, the three grading standards that you uh, are, that I'm sure you're, um, you know by now. Um, we're encouraging everyone from tutors and course leaders to contribute to this library and support, uh, enrich the, um, the collective assessment practice. So please feel free to contribute and add your assignment briefs here as well you can send it to us and we'll add it for you um, at any point when you have your assignment briefs ready another thing similar to to this uh, repository kind of uh, library we have is the teaching and learning resources and that's another uh, place where you can add um, any useful resources that you found for teaching lecture notes case studies interactive activities anything for in-person hybrid online formats everything that you think would any other tutor or any other student might benefit from uh, having uh, this is also another place for you to um, add and make use of the resources available to you uh, and this is all stuff that's been shared by the Kava community. So please feel free to uh, add your stuff. And same likewise with the with the assignment library. Send it to us, and we'll add it. Uh, we'll add it to the re teaching and learning resources. So we're very excited for these brand new two additions that we've had on the diploma site. Um, and we uh, hope that will be useful and helpful for everybody in the community. So now I'm going to jump onto the external moderation and you all already probably know, um, but the external moderation is a very essential uh, element of the access to HE quality assurance process. We confirm the names of the external moderators in November and the areas or the subjects that they will be uh, moderating. Um, some of these are diploma moderators. Those are the uh, people involved with um, the moderation of a specific diploma like science or the diploma as a whole. And we also have subject moderators. And those are people who look at specific subjects within a diploma. So if someone, if the diploma moderator is looking at the entire 
course of science, some uh, subject moderator may look at more specific things like the chemistry parts that's included in there or um, physics parts of the of the of the course. So that was the, the distinction between the two, uh, the diploma and the subject moderators, but they're both part of the external moderation process. Um, so we will appoint external moderators in November. Those external moderators will get in touch with you um, to arrange the first dates of the external moderation. And this will most likely be in person and it should be in person, the first one. Um, the second one will be online, but the first will be around February and or March. So you will decide and arrange the dates together. And you will also arrange um, how the sampling will um, be done, how you will send the samples to the external moderators. You'll also find practical um, information to support the visit to the delivery site. This is something that you will discuss with the external moderator as well. Um, and yeah, it will be, all of this will be happening in November. The arrangements um, for the first external moderation in February, March time. So it's your responsibility, it's the college's responsibility to make arrangements for the day and make sure that the external moderators have a chance to meet the staff, the students, and have a chat, um, as well as look at the um, samples of student work that we sent earlier. External moderation reports are usually handed in within two working days of their visit, and that will be um, the external moderator's responsibility to send it to Kava within two working days. Um, assuming that everything goes smoothly, the samples have been sent before uh, their visit, uh, and they've had the chance to meet the staff and the students. All right, I will quickly talk to you now about some of the key um, events and training uh, opportunities available to you. And as always, these are um, free uh, trainings that uh, uh, entail no further costs to providers. So it's um, we would highly, highly recommend that you attend or one of your team members that can attend if, if you have uh, other obligations on that day. So as you can see, the one, um, the new to access briefing was uh, last week we had, it was the new to access briefing. So we're having the second one that you can see now is the provider briefing. Another really important one happening is uh, our conference, which will be in person this year. Um, and we would highly recommend uh, that you could attend if you have um, the means to get there. I, we understand it's um, it might be far for some of you, but uh, it's taking place in Anglia Ruskin University on the Peterborough campus on the 6th of December. Uh, so it is a hybrid event. If you can't attend in person, uh, please uh, dial in and we will uh, have um, a platform for everyone to um, be present um, in an online setting. So. Uh, we'll be we'll be launching the registration form very shortly, so keep an eye out for it. Next, we want to talk to you about uh, the standardization events that happen on the fourth, fifth, and eleventh of February. Uh, these are really important as well. Uh, everything to talk about um, how we can um, standardize and and make our uh, assessment practice more um, in line with with each other's uh, work and, and make sure that students who are studying in different geographically different places um, are uh, being assessed as similarly as we could possibly make it. Um, next is the pre-access seminar at the end of February. This is a good opportunity for you to learn about the pre-access and the benefits it offers for students in the college. Pre-access qualifications, uh, are an ideal choice for students with no formal qualification to begin their academic journey. So students have absolutely no academic uh, background. This is a good place to start. Kava works in partnership with the National Open College Network, NOCN, to offer um, a suite of level two pre-access qualifications. We have the award, the certificate, and the diploma. 
for pre-access. If you'd like to know more about these qualifications and the benefits they bring, please get in touch and also attend the pre-access seminar. Another uh, new thing that will be happening is um, drop the dropping drop-in sessions this year. Uh, we're very excited to launch it, uh, and it will be a monthly drop-in session where you will be um, offered a one-hour uh, session at the very last Wednesday of each month at two o'clock. You will have a member of the quality team from Kava available to answer any questions you have and assist you with anything you're finding difficult. It's really a great opportunity to network as well and connect with other colleagues that might be there at the drop-in session. So our first session will be uh, hosted by our new CEO, Emily Ross, and our quality manager, Barbara Hughes, and will be on September 25th. So that's the last Wednesday of this month. So we will share a link for the uh, monthly newsletter, and that will go out uh, on the first Wednesday of the month. If you'd like to come to the first event, please email Georgia and she will send you a link to it. Okay, QAA revised uh, grading scheme. I'm sure you're aware of this by now. You've heard it many times, but it has already happened. It's taken effect uh, starting August 1st this year. Uh, I will just quickly run through uh, the highlights of the key changes. Um, but for more detailed information, uh, please refer to the recordings we have on our YouTube channel. You'll find all the details there. But to run you through the main things that changed, so instead of we, instead of the seven grading descriptors, we have three grading standards applied equally to all units. So all units have this, those three grading standards, whereas before we had the great seven grade descriptors and you have to choose a few. Now all of them are being applied equally on all assignments within a unit. So the first grading standard is on knowledge and understanding. Second is uh, subject specific skills. The third, transferable skills. So each grading standard is now made up of components and subcomponents which tutors can choose uh, based on the specific skills they're assessing for that unit or that for that assignment. Um, a unit grade will only be determined upon completion of all learning outcomes. So when all the learning outcomes are complete, only then can um, grading be done. So what if you have two assignments then? Well, that would mean even if the first assignment, all the learning outcomes have been achieved and, and everything has been completed, you'd still have to wait for all the, all the learning outcomes from both assignments um, to be complete for you to be able to award a final grade. So grading of individual assignments will not be taking place. Third, uh, or rather another um, important change is that um, the referral opportunities will now be graded. So um, as you may know, referrals are the third and final attempt. So if a student has one submission, they have a resubmission opportunity and then a referral, which is a third and final attempt. Whereas um, in, in previous years, this was capped at a pass. This will no longer be the case this year. They will, they will be graded as normal unless, and a big unless, they are late. So if anything is late and it's not agreed on with the tutor or the course leaders, um, or, the, or if the college is not aware of the student's uh, situation for, for uh, submitting late, it has to be capped at a pass. Again, anything uh if that you want to know more about uh in detail um about the grading standards you can find on our youtube channel so now i will hand over to georgia who will um talk to you about a game we're playing some fun activity Thank you, thank you, Nork. Um, if any of you haven't done Kahoot before, um, it is a great, uh, is a quiz game, and this is what we believe is a bit more fun than us sitting here and talking through some of the um, device grading scheme and just going through. We know it, so please go on to Kahoot.it, um, and you'll have the option to put in the game pin, which is eight 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 three eight five. It is on the screen for you. You will want to make sure you can see. 
um, our screen that we are sharing and an additional screen which you are answering on. Uh, thank you, Simon, for being so speedy. So the way Kahoot works, if any of you haven't done it before, is on the screen we are sharing, you will be able to see some questions come up. And underneath the questions, it will either be multiple choice. So there will be four possible answers. And each answer that you could choose will be on a different color block. Um, and then on the screen you are answering on, that might be your phone, that might be a different screen, um, a different device, you will just get those color blocks. So you click the one that lines up with where the answer is. Um, there also might be true and false questions. So exactly the same. So whatever color lines up with true, that is what you click. Um, I promise it's simpler than making it sound. Um, so I'll just give you a few more seconds for everyone to join. If you can't or if you don't have an additional device or if you don't want to, absolutely fine. Feel free just to play along um, and just have a think what you would pick. When you, If you are taking part, the quicker you answer the questions, the more points you will get. Um, I would love to say we are not a competitive group, so it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, that isn't a true statement in our office. Uh, but today we are not competitive. It really doesn't matter who gets the most points going forward. Um, so I will just give another minute before I get started. I see quite a few of you. You get assigned fantastic little um, images. If you can't see them. Um, fantastic. In the 20 seconds or so. And I'll get started. Just a little bit of a heads up. Some of these questions are worded um, not to trick you at all. That is not our point. Just make sure you read them very carefully. Okay, let's get started. So our first question. How many grading standards are there? That's something quite simple. If you think three, click red. If you think five, click blue. Fantastic. Well done. All of you got that right. That is, in fact, three. And Katie was the fastest. Well done, Katie. Okay, a true or false question. Each unit and assignment must be assessed using all three grading standards. Is that true or false? That, one. that is true. Um, no worries if you get any of these wrong. We know it's new. Um, it's just going over to revise us. Yes, every single unit, every single assignment, you must assess them with all three of the grading standards. Not necessarily all of the components and subcomponents, but you must use every single one of the three standards. Well done, Simon, taking the lead there. Okay, what is grading standard one? Fantastic. Well done. All of you got that right. And Katie back in the lead. Well done. Okay, another true or false. If work is handed in late and eligible for a referral, is it capped at a pass? If it's handed in late, but they can get a referral. Ooh, a little bit of a mix there. Um, the nine is correct. It is capped at a pass. So if any of the um, submissions are turned in late without um, that extenuating circumstances, you haven't agreed it by the tutor, then they cannot get more than a pass. They cannot get a merit. They cannot get a distinction. It is capped at a pass. Ooh, a little bit of movement. Okay. When there was more than one assignment, when can grading take place? A couple of these are similar, so you might have to read them. Uh, 
I've done. Red and yellow there are both worded very, very similar. Um, so it is when all learning outcomes have been met. So what Red is saying is once the assignments have been submitted, if a student hasn't met those learning outcomes, it is not yet okay to grade it. Um, they may need to go through for that resubmission. So when all of the learning outcomes have been met, that is when we give the students their grade. Well done, those of you who got that right. Katie's still holding that top spot. So true or false, graded feedback can be given after the first of two assignments have been submitted. After that first, well done. Uh, so that is correct. That is false. Cannot happen when we are saying graded feedback. That is giving it a um, giving it a grade or using that language that like excellent, that very good. Uh, we're staying away from anything that links to being graded. Well done. What is grading standard three? You did so well at grading standard one. Fantastic. A lot of you do transferable skills. Um, and, and five, you've put quality. Quality actually comes across all of the grading standards, but it is not specifically one of them. So there's three and none of them are quality. It's a little clue for when we ask about what grading standard two. Uh, well done, Kimmy, taking the lead. Okay, another true or false. When giving formative feedback, a tutor can use the language of the grading standards. So when giving formative feedback. By the language we're talking about, excellent, very good, good. You use that formative feedback. Well done, it is false. You cannot use that language when you're giving formative feedback. Um, QAA have determined that that links too closely to graded feedback. So therefore, we avoid those words when we are giving formative feedback. Well done, Kimmy, keeping the top spot. A student can have a maximum of how many credits of referral? Well done. So a little bit of a mixed mixed opinion there. It is in fact 15. Um, so up to 15 credits can be put forward for referral. So across those three, six and nine credits, only 15 can go through. Small movement. Okay, true or false. All referrals are capped at a pass. Well done, that is false. That used to be true last year. That would have been true, but this year it is not true. The majority of referrals can get a merit or distinction unless they have been turned in late at any point. I like how some of you are getting very quick at answering these. <laughs> uh, what is grading standard two? So we've had one and three. What is two? Well done, it is in fact skills. Um, like we said, transferable skills was one. We had knowledge and understanding three. Quality, like I said earlier, is, is none of them. It does fit into all of them. It's such an important part, but it is not one of the three grading standards. So it is in fact skills. Well done to those of you who got that. Okay, true or false? Grading standards will only be applied upon completion of all unit learning outcomes. Well done, the majority of you. That was true. You can only apply those grading standards when all of the learning outcomes have been met. Ooh, no movement on there. Well done, Kimmy. Okay, last one. Each of the three grading standards comprises of a set of what?
Well done. So a little bit of a trick question, I think, because yes, components is right. Yes, subcomponents is right. But yellow says components and subcomponents. So all three of them have components and they have subcomponents within that. I'm glad no one said neither. Okay, let's see how we did. Fant well done, all of you. That was fantastic. Um, I can see a few of you taking the top spots. Well, really fantastic, really, really good. If any um, of those things came up that you're unsure of or you just want to make sure, please add them to the Padlet because we are more than happy um, to go through everything, anything in our Q&A. We know it's new. We really are happy to talk about it. Um, in case I've just seen a question, I will add that to the Padlet and it will be answered. But I'm now going to hand to Emma. Lovely. Thank you. Sorry, I was a bit eager there, Georgia, turning my mic on. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we're now going to take this opportunity to look at a unit choices spreadsheet. So, Georgia, could you please share the uh, unit choices spreadsheet for me? Thank you. Okay, so a unit choices spreadsheet contains the information about the units that you can choose from. So please make sure that you only choose the units which are listed on the spreadsheet. And we're now going to complete this together just as a demonstration for you. So on the front page here, you can see that this unit choices spreadsheet is currently blank. And there's going to be opportunities for you to add your selected ungraded and graded units. Once we have selected these units, they will appear on this front page. To do this, we need to go to the tabs at the bottom. So along the bottom, you can see we've got selected units, assessment plan, graded and ungraded. Please don't try to enter your units on the straight onto this front page as it's not going to work. So Georgia, could we click on the ungraded units, please? And for this example, we've used the access to HE diploma shoemaking. Here you'll see all the possible ungraded units within the framework. Please remember that you must only select 15 credits worth of ungraded units. And for study stills, sub, sorry, study skills, there are two mandatory units. So Georgia, I'm first going to ask you to select unit 3808, please, which is core study skills one, research. And you select this by typing in the word core. This will be in the column titled running. Can I now please ask you to do the same for unit 3809, core HE study skills, two, presentation and reflection. This now provides me, as you can see, with six credits of ungraded units. I now need to select a further nine units from the optional ungraded units. So for this example, I'm gonna choose the following units, please, Georgia. So 3813, which is another study skills unit, Unit 4600, which is a health and safety unit. And unit 4601, which is working with materials in shoemaking. So if we now go back to click on the selected units tab, we can see that all the ungraded units have now been added. Before we add the graded units, I'd just like to draw your attention to the right hand side of this page where you can see two colored boxes under the section, rules of combination compliant. So there must be at least one six or nine credit unit within your unit selection and a total of six and nine credits that is less than 30. Once both of these statements are correct, they will turn green. And this means that your unit choices are compliant with the QAA diploma specification. So you can see there at the moment, we've got a red box because we don't have, we haven't selected one, six or nine credit units. So let's go and rectify that and make it correct, Georgia, please. So we're now looking at the graded units. For this demonstration, we've chosen a framework where all graded units are mandatory. So Georgia, could I now ask you to select all the graded units, please? Thank you. For diplomas where there's both mandatory and optional or optional grade, or sorry, start again. For diplomas where there are both mandatory and optional or all optional graded units, please remember that you can only select 45 credits worth. So if we now go back to the selected units tab again, let's have a look what's happened. So we can see that all of our graded units have now been added. 
and we can see that both of our boxes have been colored green. Please remember that the unit choices spreadsheet must be completed and sent to Carver by September the 23rd if you haven't done so already. In addition to sending your unit choices selection sheet, we're also asking that you complete your assessment plan for your course and you can find this on the assessment tab of the unit choices sheet. Georgia, can I just ask you to highlight the assessment plan tab at the bottom of the page? Lovely, thank you. Um, in addition to sending us the unit choices spreadsheet with your completed assessment plan, you should also have received an email from Jackie a couple of weeks ago, um, where Jackie's requested that the following information please be sent to Carver. So um, what we're asking is that you will be sent your definitive rules of combination and the units, and we'd like you to let us know if there are any inaccuracies in the validated unit reference sheets and rules of combination. You can also find the, um, these documents on your provider site. Any historic paperwork should be destroyed, and this is really important. Um, because what you've been sent and what's on your provider site is the validated versions that must be used by um, the delivery team for delivery in 24, 2025. Um, as you're aware, the diploma specification has changed, the grading um, scheme has changed. So therefore, any paperwork that was used in 23, 24 for delivery must be destroyed and you use the um, up-to-date paperwork for this academic year, please. Can you also please let Carver know um, any courses that are running? So you need to let us know which access to HE diplomas you're responsible for and wish to run this year. Um, if you are running a course and haven't told Carver, please can you do this as a matter of urgency? And we'd also like to know if there's any changes to the access to HE um, course team as well. The reason we need to know this information is so that we can grant them access to the provider site and the Carver database. And can you also please send in a CV for them? Um, an assessment schedule and timetable. So we have asked for your assessment schedule, which includes details about the different types of assessment that are being used. And it, please indicate if any blended learning is taking place. The reason we're asking for this information is because it helps us to provide tailored quality assurance for the course and will also support analysis of student achievement to ensure that it's measured consistently across all our providers. We do have a video on how to complete the assessment plan. Um, and this can, uh, Georgia, can we send the video out as well? So Georgia will send out uh, the video for how to complete your assessment plan in the follow-up email. And then we'd also like to see, um, ask you to submit your assignment briefs, please. So you should be uh, submitting assignment briefs for your first term um, by September the 23rd. And then for the assignments that you are due to deliver in the spring term, we're requesting that we, we receive these by the 17th of January, please. We would also like you to send um, details about internal moderation. So please make sure that you send your internal moderation plans to Carver. And we've got an example here um, for you. So Georgia, if I could please ask you to just click and share the example um, internal moderation plan. Again, a copy of this will go out in the follow-up email, so I won't take you through it, but I will just give you one minute to have a look um, at the example on the screen. Okay, when you're sending in um, details of your internal moderation, can you please make sure you, that you tell us the name and contact details of who your internal moderators are? Thank you. Thank you, Georgia. Could I please ask you now to share the evaluation form for me in the chat? Okay, so Georgia's just posting a link to the evaluation form and we'll give you a minute or two to complete this for us. Okay, thank you, Georgia. Um, again, if you haven't had a chance to fill in the evaluation form, 
um, fully. This link to this will be sent out um, in the follow-up email. And if we could please ask you to take a couple of minutes just to do this and send it back to Carver, as we really do value your feedback um, and take on board all your comments. Thank you. I'm now just going to hand over to Nork, who is going to take you through the Carver Annual Planner. Thank you, Emma. Hello, everyone. Uh, again, I'm now going to quickly run through the most important um, dates and deadlines um, in the in this coming academic year. Uh, we'll just go straight into September, I guess, because we're past August. Um, we're, we're doing the provider briefings now, so there will be a last session on the 17th. If someone from your college still would like to join, they have a chance on the 17th. Um, I would also highly recommend um, um, attending the drop-in session at the end of this month. It will be the first one. Uh, it's, it's a really good opportunity to ask any questions. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it will be uh, hosted by our new CEO, Emily Ross, and it's also a good opportunity to network. So please do attend. Um, October, the highlights of October is that it's um, we have a day called day 42 in October, and that's the 42 days after your course has started. So we don't have a specific date for it because it's different for every um, college. Some colleges start at different times. But on the 42nd day after starting your course, around six weeks, it's um, it will be time to upload all the students onto the database. So any student who has stayed beyond this point uh, should be uploaded onto the database. Um, and if someone uh, is on the database after 42 days who is not continuing, um, you will be charged for their registration. And this may affect um, achievement and reten retention figures that come, come out um, as statistics. Um, for the academic year. Another important thing in November is to highlight, I'm going to highlight what I mentioned earlier is that we will be appointing uh, external moderators and Kava will let colleges know uh, who their external moderator is and your external moderator will also be getting in touch with you to um, arrange all the different things I, I mentioned earlier. December time, um, 2nd of December, colleges are required to confirm the date of first appointment of moderation. So after discussing with your external moderator, you should let us know by December 2nd when the first um, external moderation meeting is happening and it will be in person. So that will be something that you'll be arranging in November and letting us know on the 2nd of December. Another important thing, uh, the highlight uh, of, of this year for Kava is our a conference which will be taking place in person but also there will be a hybrid event so you can uh, you can dial in um, online and we will have a platform for you to see everything that's happening um, at the conference remember uh, to look out for the registration form uh, in the upcoming newsletter um, December 16 is the, also a deadline for registering all students to 60 credits on the CAVA database so um, or before formal applications to UCAS, whichever date occurs first. Um, student grades achieved to date must be entered onto the CAVA database as well on December 16th. January time, um, we will send out uh, a register of students to the colleges and you will be asked to review uh, the, the, these registers and alert CAVA to any changes made. Um, also, in January time, we expect colleges to submit assignment briefs for the spring term. Around February, we have the standardization event on the 4th, 5th, and 11th, as I mentioned earlier. We're also holding an annual pre-access seminar, so please come along if you would like to find out more about the pre-access uh, qualification that I was talking about earlier. It's a level 2 qualification, and it's really helpful for students who do not have any background, uh, academic background. Um, to start off with. Another thing happening in uh, February is um, external moderation visits that will start happening in February. Um, and same for March as well. It will be, uh, the, there will be external moderators coming into your colleges um, and, as, and it will be also the process of you also giving them samples. 
giving them a chance to speak to uh, staff, course teams, and students as well. So that will be happening all around February and March. That will be the first external moderation visit. Um, around April time, we will discuss the details for the second point of moderation. Um, and that will be uh, also, we will start to arrange those dates as well. Um, we also have a free training event in the form of quality assurance webinar happening in April. So um, keep an eye out for that as well. If you are interested in joining, uh, uh, links will follow, um, uh, registration links will follow in due course. In May time, we have um, a registration, uh, Kaba will send out a register of students to the colleges. So please review these registers and alert Kaba to any changes made. And colleges uh, are to notify Kava of any students on part-time programs in May time. And June, July is also the time where second moderation, external moderation takes place. And this time it's online. The second one is online. So another really important thing that happens in um, June, July time is that the awards boards takes place. And that's when students are awarded their grades and they're certificated. Um, yeah, at, and before we have the awards words, we obviously have a briefing for that. So we'll be briefing everyone uh, from external moderators and colleges on the whole procedure of, of awards boards. And we'll have another one for um, awards board chairs. That's another briefing, but that will also be, um, the chairs will also be um, appointed from the colleges. So that will be relevant to you as well. July specifically is really the time where we have um, all the awards boards will be done. So the grades will be given out, certifications will be done, but there will be also uh, um, opportunities for appeals. So there will be appeals boards uh, in taking place in July time and students will start to get certificated as well. And the, resu and the results um, are received by UCAS. Finally, in August, uh, we have two more appeals panels, so these are um, opportunities for students to um, to make an appeal, um, and they can only appeal on two grounds. Really, um, it's one is the what if there's been an administrative error or there's been an input error in, uh, in grades, um, and the second is that um, if they've had extenuating circumstances, they that they could not um, inform us at the time of the awards board. So appeals are only on these two grounds and there's an appeals panel uh, that gets together and makes a decision uh, based on uh, students cases and on based on the case uh, case by case um i will now hand over to georgia who will talk to us about kava communication thanks georgia okay. um so i'm going to talk on north microphone still so apologies if you can't hear me too well um, so just want to make sure everyone is aware of how we communicate and make sure you are signed up to get everything that we offer. So every month we send out a monthly newsletter. I'm just going to put in the chat now our newsletter registration form. So if you are not registered to have our newsletter, I strongly recommend it. Um, this is where we highlight all of our practice blogs, all of our progression information. Um, when people reach out to us and send things that they want us to promote, it goes in the newsletter. It's really useful. Um, but especially more than ever going forward, this will be the only place we are sharing the drop-in session links. Um, this goes out on the first Wednesday of every month. So for September, we have missed that. So if you would like that registration, please do get in touch with me. I'm happy to send it through to you. Um, but if you would like them going forward, please use that registration link and I will get you signed up so you will receive the October newsletter. Um, we also are on social media. So we primarily are on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, or X. Um, we really use this to talk about lots and lots of things, but really our events, we talk about uh, blog posts that we share, just like our newsletter. Um, and we might email you about it, but this is one where we really need to promote it. And you'll see um, more of the, the fun visuals about it and more of that promotion. So we really like it. And I think people get a chance to be reminded of upcoming events upcoming information so if you're not following on us um, if you're not following us please do i will share all of those links in our follow-up email which will probably go out tomorrow um, so on linkedin facebook and twitter slash x 
Um, finally, we also have a promotion and, and recruitment working group. So this meets about four times a year, um, and it's a mixture of tutors and marketing people. So if anyone in your marketing team would like to come along, they are more than welcome. Um, it's just a chance to talk and work together on the best way to promote access. We love access, we want to promote it, we know you do too. Um, so it's really fantastic to have this opportunity to see how others are doing that and how they are increasing their recruitment by the use of promotion. Also, it's really common in these meetings for someone to say, oh, we've got a great um, a great drop-in session coming up and I'll say, oh, send it through and we can share it on our channels um, and people really help each other out. So if you'd be interested in joining or would like someone from your college or provider to join, please drop me an email. Again, I will remind you in the follow-up email. Um, so just look out for it, all the information will be in there. But these are really our key ways of communicating. Um, okay, I'm gonna hand it back over to Emma and Noor to do our Q&A session. So back to you guys. Everyone, so let's have a look at the Padlet questions. Sorry, I can't get the mouse to move. Oh, okay. So how do we control written assignments? Concerns are raised about use of AI. Yes, definitely this is something that uh, is a very timely topic and it's been discussed everywhere. Um, I think personally, uh, Kava has a guidance on this. So, um, but my personal uh, take on this is that as much as possible, where wherever it is possible um, to make the questions uh, as, um personal or or ask them to reflect on certain things based on experience based on their ideas their opinions but for other topics like sciences where there is not um there is not an opportunity really to um talk about talk from personal experience you could ask still to um reflect on um a practical experience that they've had their lab experience what they did in the lab so um wherever possible it's 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 hard to do um another possibility is also um, moving to more um, verbal type of assessments as well viva s kind of assessments where um you can uh, talk to the students and um based on that um we have also an observations report where you could um note down or um document their answers so that will be a way for uh, there, there will be a way for for it to be moderated as well. So these are just some possibilities, but we do have um, a guidance that we keep updating because everything is is changing very fast. Um, we are updating it, um, and it is a guidance on AI um, in education and assessment specifically, and how to go about it and how to mitigate the risk of unfair use of AI. Um, I've just seen uh, a comment from Paul Roberts that it is vague, and I I, I see what you're saying. Um, it is vague because a lot of it is changing, um, but I've tried now in my answer to kind of give you some examples or specify certain um, ways you can um, mitigate unfair use. One would be just to um, narrow it down to make it more personal, the questions, um, make them, uh, make it, based on their experience their reflection of, of certain things and another would be um to have more kind of verbal type of assessments where you can actually probe the mind of the of the student or the learner and and see if they've really understood um, and they can discuss their answers um with you and you can then um note that down in an observation um record that we have as well that we could send to you the colleges should have their own oh. policy as well, should yeah. they in place? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yes, just to add on to what Nork was saying, um, yeah, I'm just kind of touching it a little bit. Um, we obviously have our guidance. It is not, nothing we do should be, um, we, we don't try and force things on you. It is really down to you. The key thing we recommend is the college having a policy. Um, we give you suggestions and we want to help, but it's really, really important that. Um, as a college, as things are progressing, you have your policy. We know it's all about student integrity, and that that definition will differ from college to college. We do not control, we do not um, mandate what your vision of that is. We are here to support you. 
Um, I think it's really important and our approach as a team is we are here to help you with got our guidance, but that should go hand in hand with what your college policy is. Thank you, Paul. We've just seen your comment there. Um, Carve a request for all assignments. Is this a new requirement? It does put a lot of pressure on staff to produce assignments by the 23rd of September. Um, it is a new requirement this year because the diploma specification changed, as did the grading scheme. We do appreciate that you are really busy, but um, we would like to see some examples of your assignment briefs, just to see if there's any areas that we could support you. Um, if you are struggling, um, please contact Carver and we can discuss individual cases separately. And um, we've also got um, a new assignment brief template for 24-25 that will go out in the follow-up email as well for those of you that might not have seen it yet. Um, but this has already been released and we've also got an example of an ungraded unit and a graded unit that we'd be more than happy to share with you. Thank you. Um, and then I think referrals. Oh, is the Did you do this one? Um, a point discussed might be that as numbers are down this year, many students that would have been onto an access program are going onto foundation degrees instead. This is what was discussed in the top of the breakout rooms earlier. So it's one thing to end just mm -hmm. to have that discussion if we had an input. I think we're seeing lots of change. Mm -hmm. I think obviously there's a lot going on, um, but politically, a lot's changing around level three. And yeah, I think we're definitely seeing people move into foundation degrees, move um, to apprenticeships as well, apprenticeships. higher apprenticeships. Um, but obviously, we are trying to do and whatever we can do to to push that promotion, that recruitment. Which the, uh, the public working group's great for the recruitment and retention handbook is great for. Uh, so hopefully some of that can support you, but it is it, it is something we're seeing nationally. So I'll, I'll let you guys know. Your question. No, no, sorry, that's fine. So I think we're on the referral question next. Mm -hmm. yep. How likely is it that a student will get will achieve a distinction if they get to referral stage? Um, that's down to the tutor's discretion and the work that the students put in as well. Yeah, it's not really likely thing is it? No. If that work, if that referral is is distinction quality then they can do what they can get um, one thing that we'll just can I still use the Carver's members area? Um, no, we took down the Carver's members area due to a um, minor security uh, cyber breach. Is that am I using the correct words there, Georgia? Thank you. Um, but all the information that was previously on the Carver's members area can be found on your provider sites as well. So um, if you are new to access and you're not registered for your provider site, please drop Carver an email so we can give you access to um, that provider site. Um, when will the new IM docs be on the provider site? So we have updated the internal moderation documents for assessment uh, assignment briefs and for internally moderating the students' work. They will be um, live on your provider sites no later than um, Monday morning. So they, are in the yellow book. they are also in the yellow book. Thank you, Georgie. Yep. So if you wanted access to them before, you can find them in the yellow book, which again can be found on your provider sites. Okay. Right. That one not? We used to put the grading criteria in the comments when marking. Um, do we still do that or are we not allowed? We, do, we used to put the grading criteria in the comments when marking. Um, when it's so it's actual, it's so on the actual body of the assignment, is that the question, right? So, yeah. So, yeah, you can still um, add comments and, and, and give uh, formative feedback, uh, just as long as you're not um, in, in implying any grades. Um, and you can always. Um, one one really um, handy way of doing it is uh, always referring back to the learning objectives, saying yes, you've this has been achieved, uh, you've you've done this. Um, so we can't use the grading criteria then. Can't use the language. So provide yeah. when provide informative feedback, you can't use the language of the grading descriptors. So you can't say some things like good, very good, excellent. Grading standards. Yeah. Grading standards. Sorry. Um, 
you can only use the language of the grading standards when all learning outcomes for all assessments for that unit have been completed. We do have a document which gives lots of examples, which will be sent in the follow up email. Um, but if you're still struggling after that, um, okay, I can see it was your question. If you're still struggling, drop, drop us an email, drop us a call. Um, but hopefully that document will give you some more ideas on things you can use. Um, somebody asked about the assessment template. Yes, Carver has produced an interactive one that is on the second tab on your unit choices spreadsheet. We do encourage you to use that. Um, however, if you've already created your own assessment template, um, you can use your own, but you must use exactly the same headings that Carver has got. Um, and we ask you, because obviously you, if it's not on the assessment tab on the unit choices spreadsheet we ask you to send it in separately for us so we can keep it on our records please thank you um so then for the qia compliance spreadsheet it looks to me like you've got your spreadsheet isn't compliant because it hasn't gone green but you've got lots and lots of optional units um i think that is fine so long as you have um, that the students only select 45 of them in their combination. We can speak to Jackie about it, but I do think that with the bigger frameworks, we have got instances like the person who posted this question. So don't panic. Just please go through them again and make sure that the learners, when they select their units, they are only having 45 graded units, 15 graded, 15 ungraded units, and that you the units in total, both graded and ungraded, six and nine credits, do not come to more than 30. Cute. Hopefully that answers that one for you. Are there any other questions, Georgia, that have been posted in the chat and not on the Padlet? No. Okay. Well, thank you ever so much, everybody, who's attended this afternoon. Um, it was lovely to see so many of you. Um, George, if you could just please share our contact details now. So please don't forget, if you've got any questions, um, please contact Carver. You can see our um, details are on the screen there. We are um, always more than happy to talk to you.